This video states and proves a relationship between conservative vector fields and vector fields whose line integrals are independent of path. Although we'll restrict our attention to vector fields in two dimensions, all of the results will still hold for vector fields in three or more dimensions. Recall that a vector field f is called conservative if f can be written as the gradient of some function phi called its potential function. A continuous vector field f is said to have line integrals that are independent of path if whenever you have two paths, c1 and c2, that start at the same place and end at the same place, the line integral f dr over c1 is equal to the line integral f dr over c2. In other words, it doesn't matter what path you take to get from point A to point B, the line integral will be independent of path. It'll be the same regardless. The continuous condition on the vector field here is thrown in so that these line integrals make sense. We've seen before that the fundamental theorem of line integrals says that you have a vector field that's conservative and it's continuous. Then the integral over any curve of f dr is just going to be phi evaluated at the end point, the terminal point, minus phi evaluated at the start point. And therefore, the line integral's value only depends on phi's value at the start and end point and won't depend on the path taken. Therefore, if f is a continuous vector field that's conservative, f's line integrals will be independent of path. In this video, I want to prove the converse. That is, that if f has line integrals that are independent of path, under suitable conditions, f will be conservative. So suppose that f is a continuous vector field on an open connected region D. Open means D doesn't contain any of its boundary points. For any point in D, there's a little disk around that point that also lies in D. Connected means that D is one contiguous piece, and in particular, for any two points in D, there is some path connecting them. So if F is a continuous vector field on an open connected region D, then if F dr is independent of path, this implies that F is conservative, i.e f is the gradient of some function phi. So to prove this, let's assume f has line integrals that are independent of path, and let's build a function phi that f is the gradient of. If this is my region D, I'm going to start with some home base point, which I'll call x0, y0. I'm going to define phi at x0, y0 to be 0, just to keep things simple. I could define it to be 13 if I wanted to, but we'll just define it to be 0 there. For any other point, x, y in D, I'm going to define phi at x, y to be the integral of f dr along a curve c, where c is any path from my home base point to my point x, y. Since f has line integrals that are independent of path, it doesn't matter which path I take from the home base to x, y, I'll still have the same line integral. Now, you may be wondering where in the world did this definition of phi come from? But I want to argue that this is really the only way it's reasonable to define phi if we want any hope of f being the gradient of phi. Because if f is the gradient of phi, then by the fundamental theorem of line integrals, we'll know that the integral of f dr will have to be equal to phi of the end point minus phi of the start point, which is going to be phi at x, y minus phi at of x naught, y naught, my home base point, 
which is just phi of x, y, since I chose to set phi of x naught, y naught to be zero. So the only reasonable definition of phi is to actually make it equal to the integral of FDR over that path C so that the fundamental line theorem of line integrals will actually hold as it has to. But this little check of reasonableness here is not enough to guarantee that the phi we've defined really works. So let's go about now and make sure that, that it does work. Let's make sure that F really is the gradient of phi. So if I write F in components, say, as little f, little g, I need to show that phi sub x is equal to f and phi sub y is equal to g. That will prove that my vector field is really the gradient of phi. Now to show that phi sub x is equal to little f, the first component of my vector field, I'm gonna look at a point x, y and I'm gonna take a small little disk around that point x, y that lies within my region D. I know it has to exist because D is open. And then I'm gonna take another point that's just a smidgen to the left of x, y. So I'll call that point x, one, y. And I'm gonna pick the particular path that goes first from x naught y naught to x one y, and then it just goes directly right to the point x y. So this is my path C. I'll call it's made up of say a subpath C one and a subpath C two, where C two is completely horizontal. Now, by definition of phi, we know that phi is equal to the integral over C of our vector field f dr, which is the integral over C one plus the integral over C2. So phi sub x is the derivative with respect to x of these integrals, which I can break up as the derivative of each in integral separately. Now as x varies, as I change this little point by moving its x, I'm not gonna change my C1. I'm just changing my C2. And therefore, this integral is just a constant as x changes and its derivative is zero. Let's write out what's going on with C2 in more detail. I can parameterize C2 by letting my x coordinate just be t, where t ranges between x1 and my x, and my y coordinate is just gonna be fixed at y. So I'm taking the derivative respect to x of the integral from t equals x1 to x of, I'll put f, capital F in components, fg dotted with x prime of t, y prime of t, dt, well, x prime of t is one and y prime of t is zero since that y value on my path here is not changing. It's just a constant horizontal line. So this integral, the derivative of this integral is the derivative of f g dotted with one zero dt, which ends up being the derivative of the integral of just f, x of t, y of t, dt. But remember, x of t is just t, y of t is just that fixed y. And so we have something where we're taking the derivative of an integral of a function of one variable. And we know by the fundamental theorem of calculus, that's just equal to f with that bound of integration x plugged in. So we've just shown that phi sub x equals f, which is the first part of what we wanted to show. 
to show that phi sub y equals g, we use a very similar argument. This time, we fix a point x, y1 that's just below our point x, y, and we make a path that first visits x, y1, and then goes straight up to x, y. Again, I'll call this point, this path, c1 together with c2. So c equals c1 union c2. And we know that phi is defined as the integral over c of f dr, which can be broken up as the sum of integrals. And so phi sub y is the derivative respect to y of these integrals. And once again, this first path is just fixed, not varying as y varies. So the derivative of that integral is the derivative of a constant, which is just zero. And we just need to worry about what happens with the second integral. We can parameterize c2. x of t is fixed at x. And y of t is just going to be t, where t ranges between y1 and y. So x prime of t will be 0, since x is fixed. And y prime of t will be 1. So if we write out our integral, it's going to be integral from t equals y1 to y of fg dotted with r prime, which is 0, 1, dt. So that's d dy of the integral of just g, x of t, y of t, dt, or the derivative of the integral of g of fixed x and y of t is t. Once again, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, the derivative of the integral is just the integrand with that y plugged in for t. And so phi sub y is just g, as we wanted to prove. So we have built a function phi such that phi sub x, phi sub y, is exactly equal to the components of our vector field. In other words, our vector field f is a conservative vector field. It's the gradient of phi. That completes the proof. In this video, we showed that for a continuous vector field on an open connected region, if f has line integrals, independent of path, then f is conservative. It's the gradient of some potential function. And we prove that by actually constructing the potential function by using line integrals.